Hey Falcons, Miss Woloski here. We're going to finish our or continue on our conversation of mixtures today and we're going to apply what we talked about in notes one and talk about how we're going to separate the components of a mixture to get you ready for some lab work in class. Um, so let's revisit the flow chart where we were at. So we were talking about mixtures and um, specifically when you have a homogeneous mixture, we would call that a solution and that means that all the particles within that particular solution or all the solute are about the same size. Um, and we're gonna use for all three of these physical ways to separate the components of the mixture. So in a homogeneous mixture or a solution, um, we're gonna talk about uh, what process that would be. The heterogeneous mixtures are your colloids and your suspensions. Recall that a colloid has two particles, small and medium. It would be cloudy in appearance. Um, filtration does not work. Um, the particles are yet still too small, um, and we'll talk about um, how you can separate particles. And finally, for a suspension, this is when you would have small, medium, and large particles. And the key here is that you have to have large particles um, so that you can have a settling phenomenon occur. And so we're going to focus predominantly today on um, separating solutions and also suspensions. Hey Falcons, Miss Valeski here. Let's uh, continue our conversation on mixtures today, specifically with how we separate the components of a mixture. So let's revisit um, what we talked about in our last notes session, that mixtures can be two major categories. So within a mixture, you can have a homogeneous mixture, which you can also call a solution. Recall that a solution has a solute, which is what is dissolved in the solvent. And we would say in a homogeneous mixture that you can't distinguish um, parts of the mixture at all. It looks the same throughout. Um, and again, we would say that the particles within it or that solute is overall small. The second type of mixture that we talked about would be a heterogeneous mixture. And colloids and suspensions fall into this category. Recall with a colloid, you have small and medium particles. Overall, it appears cloudy, but your small and medium particles um, you can't see the differences there, and that's what gives you the cloudy um, appearance in your flask or your beaker. In a heterogeneous mixture that's a suspension, you can actually see particles floating in that flask. And for that reason, we would say that there's small and large particles or small, medium and large particles. So now let's talk about how you would go about using physical means to separate components of or parts of a homogeneous or a heterogeneous mixture. So we're gonna take a look at this flow chart here and this gives us the separation techniques. So you can have a pure compound, recall that that's a chemical bond holding that together. So you need that decomposition reaction or electrolysis to separate the parts of a compound. We're focusing on this side of the diagram here, mixtures. Um, we're specifically looking at these physical processes that separate the components of a mixture. We're gonna start on this side of the diagram um, and we're gonna move in this direction. So we're gonna start with evaporation and distillation first. Um, you can kind of think of it as this being your homogeneous mixture. Over here, these are gonna be your heterogeneous mixtures. So let's take a look at each of these and be thinking about how um, you would see and use these in a lab situation. So the first technique we're looking at is evaporation and you would use this on a homogeneous mixture or a solution. And this all works based on the boiling point of the components within that particular solution. So a classic example would be salt water. And what you're doing here is you're gonna basically use what's called an evaporating dish. Here you would see what ours look like in the lab. Um, it's, over, it's on the ring stand over the Bunsen burner. Here you can see an illustration of that and you would have your salt water in the evaporating dish. You're using the, the different boiling points of the solvent and the solute to actually separate the two. So water is gonna have a different boiling point um, than the salt. And what's gonna happen is you're actually gonna evaporate the water off from heat. That's gonna be lost. There's nothing capturing that. It's gonna be lost into the room and you're left with that component of the mixture that has that, that higher um, boiling point here. And so you can actually see, in this case, the salt would be left behind. So you could take what is ever left behind in the dish and then continue testing that or looking at a different separation technique for what's left. Um, but again, the big thing you need to, to know here is that um, 
you have something that's being lost into the room, that evaporated portion that has that, that lower boiling point. All right, let's take a look at distillation. And I have an, a video to show you that. This is a distillation apparatus. And again, we're still looking at a homogenous mixture or solution, but now instead of losing that lower boiling point um, water, we're gonna actually collect it. So what happens in a distillation apparatus, you still have your heat and you have your flask here, but it's it's got a stopper. So you're using that heat to produce that steam. And as that steam goes down this condensing tube, it's going to cool. And that water, which is being condensed into a liquid, would then be collected into a beaker. And you're left with the salt in the original flask. So here the big difference is that you're, you're collecting that condensed portion. And then you can actually either test what's in the beaker and test, test what's left in your flask. So you, you have more of a closed system in this particular situation. Now, an application of distillation is actually the petroleum industry. So here's a video. You can speak with your teacher as to whether this can be an extra credit or an enrichment summary. Um, but this diagram here does a great job of showing you distillation of petroleum. So um, crude oil, when it goes into um, the distillation process, you can actually see all the different components of petroleum, those carbon compounds, um, are used for different products. And so it's using the different boiling points to separate the parts of the crude oil into petrol products. Um, so again, a huge application of that. And you can see all the different um, components of petroleum or crude oil that give us things that we use like um, chemicals, diesel fuels, um, waxes and polishes, so on and so forth. Now let's talk about the side of the mixtures that are heterogeneous. So now we're looking at um, two different ideas, filtration and, and de decanting. So filtration can be used for suspensions. Recall that a suspension has um, small and large particles. You can see those particles. And eventually as you let that solution sit or that mixture sit, um, you can see them actually start to, those large particles settle out. So what it's using based here is, is particle size. So what you saw in the animation there was filter paper running a sand and water solution through the filter paper and then you can collect your solid in um, the filter paper. The last one we're going to talk about is decantation. And decantation is, again, using a heterogeneous mixture. But now you're using, um, instead of a solid and a liquid, you're actually using two liquids where you have different densities. Um, and what's happening is you have your less dense material on top and your more dense material on the bottom. And decanting is basically pouring out those layers to pull them apart. So you can either pour off the less dense portion, which is on the top, or you can drain out the more, de uh, the more dense portion from the bottom. So it just depends how you wanna do this. Um, an application of this is even when you're making soup in the kitchen and you get that fat layer on top of a really rich soup, you can skim that off with a spoon or you could pour it off um, into um, a can or whatever um, if you're saving it or throwing it away. So we oftentimes will even do this in the kitchen. So it's using density um, to do that. In sum, these are the physical ways in which we separate mixtures. Again, um, we focus today on those physical processes for a homogenous mixture. Um, we used evaporation and um, distillation if it's a solution. And for heterogeneous mixtures, we used Filtration, using that particle size, those larger particles settling out, or density if there's layers and we use decantation. Be thinking about how these are applicable to a lab situation as you can separate mixtures. Have a great day, Falcons.